Well, welcome back. In this session, I'm going to teach you about the GeoDatabase container. And the first thing we'll do is we'll make a shape file, and then we'll basically import that into a GeoDatabase container. So using the Create Fishnet tool, I'm going to make a shape file called GCS Squares. And it will be in UTM Zone 6, which has a central meridian at negative 147. So every UTM zone is or six degrees wide. So if I go from the central meridian three degrees west, I'm at negative 150. So my origin will be negative 150, and I arbitrarily pick 64 degrees north as my origin. And then we'll have our squares one degree wide, one degree high. And then the edge of the zone, negative 147, go east three degrees, would be at negative 144 and I'll go all the way up to 66 degrees. And then if I put in zero for number of rows, number of columns, the Create Fishnet tool will calculate how many rows, how many columns are needed to fill in. And then I'll make a polygon with the Create Fishnet tool. So there'll be squares one degree high by one degree wide, and they'll range in longitude from negative 144 to negative 150. Okay, so I've got my squares, so the next step would be to define the coordinate system of these squares using the define projection tool. So my shapefile is GCS squares, and they're in longitude and latitude and AD 83. And then just OK. Okay, so now we're going to make a geodatabase container, and the easiest way to do that would be to use the catalog window and right mouse click on the folder where you want that geodatabase container to be. So I'll right mouse click on my NRM test folder and then new file geodatabase. And then we can name that whatever we want, so I'll name that my geodatabase with no spaces. So my geodatabase. And then one of the nice things about geodatabases is they have something called feature data sets. And the idea behind a feature data set is every feature class in that feature data set is in the same coordinate system. So we'll make a feature data set for our uh, GCS square. So that would be right click on your, on your geodatabase container and then new feature data set. So we'll call this geographic feature data set. So GCS and then next the geographic coordinate system from my layer. And then if we had a vertical coordinate system we would also define that. We don't so we'll go next. And then how close is close enough. So we'll have um, this as our XY tolerance. So if any feature is within that distance, they're considered to be exactly in the same location. And then just finish. So that created this feature data set. So then what we could do is import our shape file into this feature data set. So the easiest way to do that is right mouse click on your feature data set container and then import feature class multiple. And in this case it's just one, but the nice thing about this tool is we don't have to even type in a name. It just inherits the names from the shape files. So we're going to take GCS squares and it'll be in this feature data set container. And then just OK. So now we have that GCS fishnet in this feature data set container and we could get rid of our original shape file. So I'll just delete the original shape file. OK, so now what we're going to do is we'll project that feature class into the UTM coordinate system and we'll actually put it in our geodatabase container and we'll call it rectangles UTM. So if I browse to my geodatabase container and double click on it to get in it and then we'll put it right at that level and it'll be called rectangles UTM. So the input from my feature data database container is in this feature data set container and it is GCS squares. So take GCS squares and project it into the UTM coordinate system and then output it into my geodatabase container 
and we'll name it rectangles UTM and then just OK. OK, so that put rectangles UTM inside this geodatabase container. It's probably a smarter idea to put it in a feature data set. So what we'll do is we'll make a new feature data set and assign the coordinate system of that new feature data set to be the same as this standalone feature class. So right mouse click on your geodatabase container, new feature data set, and we'll call this um, UTM feature data set. And then next, and then what's the coordinate system? So if I go to the globe, add coordinate system, and then import, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is we can go all the way down to the bottom and under layers just grab it from our current layer in our table of contents. And then we don't have a vertical coordinate system so we go next and then if the features are within point zero 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 one meters they're going to be considered in the same location and then finish. Okay and then we can simply drag our rectangles into that feature data set container and now we've got a nice feature data set it's got a coordinate system property and everything in this feature data set will be have the same coordinate system. Okay so let's calculate the polygon ID to be the object ID plus 10. So we'll use the field calculator. Okay, and then let's use a tool to assign random locations within each rectangle as a function of the ID. So for example, this first polygon will put 11 points randomly distributed in this first polygon. And this polygon we'll put 22 points randomly distributed in that polygon. Okay, so we're going to use this tool, Create Random Points, and the output location will be our UTM feature data set container. And we'll have a new output point feature class. I just called it Random Points. And then it's going to be constrained by our rectangles. So that polygon feature class sitting in this feature data set. And then what we'll do is we'll say, give us the number of random points as a function of a field. So as a function of the ID field. And then just OK. OK, so the result is a point feature class. So for example, inside this polygon, there'll be 11 points randomly distributed. And inside this polygon, there'll be 22 points randomly distributed. So the next step will be to transfer the number of points sitting in each polygon to the polygon. So we'll use a spatial join tool to transfer that information. But before we use that tool, we'll specify our default geodatabase. So if you go to File Menu, Map Document Properties, down here at the bottom, the default geodatabase, will turn to my geodatabase. Okay, so our target is the polygons, our rectangles, and we want to know for each rectangle how many points are sitting in each rectangle. And then just OK. So after spatial join, we have a field called join count for each polygon, and this is basically how many points are sitting in each rectangle. So what we could do is we could move this feature class so it's in our UTM feature data set. So we just grab it and put it in our UTM feature data set container. Okay, so now we've got two feature data sets inside our geodatabase container. Our first feature data set is in the geographic coordinates. It's got one um, feature class. Our second feature data set containers in the UTM coordinate system. It's got one point feature class and it's got two polygon feature classes. Okay, so I'm going to stop there and in the next session we'll talk about domains and subtypes in geodatabase